Alexander, Costadinas and Luis. And uh, we are in front of Canada Arm 2. Uh, we are located in the Canadian Space Agency and we are about to do an interview with Dr. Marie Jose Potvin, Senior Systems Engineer here in this facility. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you so much for having this interview with us. So uh, we know your title is uh, Senior System Engineer, right? Yes, it is. Could you describe uh, a bit your role here in a few words? I have multiple roles, and, and that's something that happens when you grow older. <laughs> they just pile up more files on you. So one of the roles I have is to take care of the training of the young engineers that come into the Canadian Space Agency. So we hire them, and then for two years we train them. We train them hard, but we try to expose them to as much as um, as many aspects of, of the Canadian Space Agency as possible. So they get to learn the technical engineering, which is really taking care of the project, calculating what needs to be done in terms of material. Uh, selecting the right materials, making sure that all the constraints are, are met and uh, taken care of. But then we also expose them to project management, which is more looking at the global scale of a project and make sure it runs smoothly, and system engineering, which is making sure that everything flows together, that we haven't forgotten any requirements along the way, and that the project in itself will work when all the pieces are put together. So, and, and this we complement with a lot of corporate knowledge. So how do you how do you behave when you represent government, when you're working for government, when you have the expectations of the Canadians in terms of making sure that the Canadian Space Agency delivers and works for the benefit of all Canadians? So is this a program that is for graduate students or for undergraduate students that have just graduated? Both actually. So we get, uh, we get people who are just finishing their bachelor degree, we get hired into the program, and then we have some with master's degree, and we also have a lot of applicants with PhDs. So it, it depends, you have to be willing to do the work, which is a very multidisciplinary work, working on different aspects of uh, space hardware. But if you're willing to do the work, we hire people um, from all types of degrees, basically. So uh, what would you say would be an advantage, and since you also have a PhD degree, what would be an advantage of having a PhD and working in the Canadian Space Agency? In any industry, I think a PhD is a different path. When you do a bachelor degree, you learn to be an engineer or a scientist, depending what type of degree you've been doing. And then when you do a master degree, you learn to be a bit more autonomous in that field, uh, whatever the field is. But when you do a PhD, you set yourself on a completely different path, and then you learn to explore new ideas, new problems, and go where nowhere has been. So most of the time, engineers uh, will like to have a recipe. They'll say, okay, what's the, what's the process to do this? How do we go about this? Doing a PhD is going where there's no recipe, and you're actually the one writing the recipe. And not everyone has been trained to do that. So it, that's what the PhD gives you, this ability to tackle a problem no one has, has handled before, and try different things, never give up. Uh, if you're doing a PhD, you know a lot about resilience. So so never give up, keep going, and eventually find a solution. So I guess those are tips that in your journey you have used of to yeah. in your job, in your everyday life. Yes, I get, I get tossed out a lot the problems that nobody wants, the problems that uh, nobody has figured out a solution or people think it will never work. Uh, they often end up on my desk. And then it's, it's a question of thinking, okay, what is, what is really the requirement here? What do people really want out of this? And then go for that. And, uh, and once you understand what they really want, try to figure out an experiment or a, a study that will actually give them what they're looking for and, and accept that there might be, there's a risk there, that you might fail, you might be on the wrong path, but keep going, try, learn from what doesn't work, and then you know, keep trying again and do it until you succeed. And that you definitely learn when you do a PhD. <laughs> That's a very good advice. <laughs> so uh, would you have a tip for uh, someone that just finished their bachelor and they want to go in, in industry, not go directly to do a graduate degree? Uh, when they go in an interview, what would you expect them to see? 
if they want to go for an interview, I'd say you never go on an interview just for trying and having fun. Whenever you go in into an interview, you do it very seriously and you prepare, prepare, prepare. So whatever is the industry you've selected, you learn everything you can about them and when you walk into the interview, you know everything about their mission, their products, their clients, their philosophy. So first you know if it's a good a good fit for you, then you can discuss this at the interview. But you know, you sort of have a feel of what they're expecting. Um, and then during the interview, you show interest for that company in whatever they're doing. A lot of what the uh, interviewers will be looking for is the, uh, the, the, the your drive, basically. Do you want, do, do you want to be uh, the one having ownership of whatever problem we give you. So do you have this ability to say, I'll, I'll deal with this, I'll take it and I'll bring it to success and I'll do what needs to be done to, uh, uh, to make sure it works. And that's what they're, we're really looking. It's, it's young people who want to really accomplish something, work with the team, not necessarily shine for themselves, but work for the team, work with the team and make sure the team gets uh, to a successful position. Those are great tips, thank you so much. So we have our interview, we come to the Canadian Space Agency as materials engineer since we come from McGill. So what materials are we going to deal with here in the Canadian Space Agency? Well, satellites deal a lot with aluminum, so a very, <laughs> very well-known material. Um, and, and that's because it's very, it feels very safe to us. We know how it's going to behave, we know its properties, it's very predictable, we can calculate what's going to happen and so on. But more and more we're facing uh, new applications. Like if we, we think about deeper space, then we need to look at new materials, lighter materials, but we also have a lot of thermal issues. How do we keep the heat in a rover where we could be in a crater where the temperatures will be minus 200 degrees Celsius for the equivalent of two weeks for us. That's a very long time to keep heat within the, a structure and if you use aluminum then you will lose all that heat very quickly. So dealing with new, I'd say new constraints, new requirements forces us to look at different materials and composite materials are certainly uh, where we're looking at and um, the ones we were more familiar with, epoxy with fibers but also some that we're less familiar with and trying to explore. A big thing also coming up is repairability. Um, if you, if if we're you're in a far outpost, being um, a, a lunar station, for example, or a settlement on the moon or on Mars, and a part breaks, it can take a long time to get an extra, a part uh, come to you. So how do you repair whatever happens there? And so repairability of those materials, and that's where we go to thermal plastics. Uh, repairability is is certainly high on our requirements. So we're looking at all these things. There's radiation management. How do we manage the, the level of radiation we'll see if we want to go for extended periods around the moon or even if we want to go to Mars? How do we protect ourselves from this? So we, we get all these new requirements that make us look at new materials. Uh, this being said, the, uh, the, the space industry is very conservative. Like we like to use materials that we know are safe and we know how they will behave. So we proceed very cautiously. When we identify new materials, we test them, uh, we try different setups, we try little prototypes before uh, having it go there and actually be on an actual spaceship. Do you develop new materials here or do you collaborate with research centers? We collaborate mostly with research centers. Uh, so we have collaborations with NRC, we have collaborations with academia, we have collaboration with industrials. So collaboration is the way we go. It, it takes, um, uh, the agency is, uh, the, the Canadian Space Agency is a, is a sizable group. We're about 600 employees, but when you're talking uh, research like this, you usually have sizable groups of researchers, which we're too small to have. So collaboration is really required, which benefits the whole ecosystem in the end. Because whenever we collaborate with academia, then we get graduate students trained in that field. Uh, we get uh, new professors uh, introduced to the field of materials for space. We get other laboratories in, in Canada introduced to that field. So it just benefits everyone. Do you collaborate only in Canada or with uh, other countries as well? It's easier to collaborate with in Canada. 
uh, we're closer, you know, geographically. It's tough in Canada, everything is far, so <laughs> if, if you want to go abroad. <laughs> so it's easier to collaborate with people uh, close by, but we talk a lot with uh, our partners. So we talk a lot with, uh, of course, people in the United States, people in Europe, and we discuss what we do. Sometimes we have little collaborations going on, we compare our calculations, we try different things together. And this is uh, only with partners, like you mentioned, research centers and academia, or also with other space agencies? We work with other space agencies. We talk a lot with them. Um, ESA, for example, looks at technologies, and that's part of one of my responsibilities, trying to figure out all the technologies that are available to us currently and the ones under development. So we have these meetings where we look at what's being done in respective countries and try to compare and try to be aware of what's out there. So there's, there's a lot of discussions among countries to try to get to the best uh, solutions for everybody. That's, that's good to hear. Do you get to travel? as well to see uh, the facilities of the other uh, space agencies, get ideas? Yes, uh, there's, there's a lot of travel involved, I, I guess, in most engineering jobs. <laughs> uh, I'm a mother though and I have a, a, a boy who's quite sick, so I try to restrict my, uh, my travel as much as possible. So I travel a few times per year uh, for short periods of time, but if I wanted to travel more I could do it though. Uh, however, nowadays, I think with, um, we have a lot of technological tools that allow us to meet without actually traveling, and that's just good for the climate, you know, so everyone mm. benefits at the end. So you've been uh, in the family of Canadian Space Agency for 23 years, is that right? Yes, that's right. So uh, what makes it special to you? Why would you come here and you, what do you feel? I think it's the passion. And that's why leaving uh, the Canadian Space Agency would be extremely difficult. You get into this building and you feel the passion. The people I work with really care about what they do. They really want to make it right. They really want to break that next barrier and, and do something that people have never done. Uh, we all know we're part of a bigger enterprise. We don't build a satellite on our own. We do this as a team. And by team, I mean the Canadian industry, academia, the other labs, everybody. But um, it, it's very satisfying to know that you're part of this. It's very satisfying to feel that passion and, and know that everyone's uh, looking towards the same goal and want to make this happen. That's great. And uh, uh, last question, I think. Um, uh, what do you think are the challenges uh, that uh, Canadian space uh, will have in the future? Uh, materials based or generally? I think it will be, um, probably the same as it is for any Canadian industry, it's finding the right niche. We have a lot of talent in Canada, a lot of good people, well trained. Now it's finding the right niche and make sure we develop the product and we conquer the, 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 um, the market for that product. And the Canadian Space Agency is really trying hard to help those companies who want to uh, attain a certain market to develop their product and get it out there. And that, that has always been the challenge and that will keep on being the challenge.